All right, today's show is awesome. We've got bust picks. We got value picks. Uh, one that is almost too embarrassing to utter on the show, and I'm going to talk about them later. So don't miss a minute of today's episode. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, <laughs> well, that's not quite there yet. No, I'm I'm fine, but uh, I think I had some permanent damage or something. Yeah, I haven't even thought about your former illness. Yeah, it's been a couple weeks. Yeah, and you don't seem sick at all until uh, that. No, I, and I'm not. I'm not sick, but I, I think something got broken. <laughs> I, I don't know. Guess we'll try again next week. Welcome uh, you, into the you, fantasy footballers. You've got until training camp to. Uh, are you going to be at full full go for training? Yeah, camp? that's that's a good point. Yeah, I mean we can. Wh when does that start? I don't. A couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. Good. Good insight. Well, why don't you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> um. Welcome Thanks. in Thursday, June twenty seventh, the fantasy footballers podcast. And uh, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway here with you. You can follow us over on X at the FF Ballers, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman, at Andy Holloway if you want to follow us over there. You can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Did you get us a date, Mike? I did. Thank the, you. The Cardinals will start. I mean, it's it's different times. Cardinals are the 23rd. Let's see. This is alphabetical, so it looks like. The earliest, I got plenty of time. The earliest team would be Houston on July 17th. I That's fine. I'll be fine by then, apparently. Bills are the 16th. Can we get a 15th? Is there a that, no, no. That's rookie report date. Oh. You're, you're using bad information. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, but that is the start. Oh, get out of here. Is okay. there an advantage to starting earlier? Do you uh, be yeah. more tired? More, more injuries in the offseason? <laughs> more prep time. The, that's what I dread in the offseason is the because this is all anticipation and excitement, but the first real injury, yeah. it's always a shock to the system. And it will happen. At least uh, it always has, historically <laughs> speaking. So we've got early busts and values on the show today. So we'll be talking about some individual picks uh, for, you know, players that we think could let you down. Jason's smirking. I... I you, do you know what I'm smirking about? No. Your value pick. I'm oh. just so – I can't wait, man. I can't wait. His yeah. value pick and my bust pick. I don't want to do this, I guys. don't know what your bust pick is, well, so I, I'm excited to I find out. I don't want to be the one who has to tell everybody what's going to happen. Oh, I did see it. But I have – Yeah, Mike's going to make you sad. I Because you know what? I made myself oh, sad. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um. I don't think we have any NFL news to cover on today's show. I did want to mention um, with the Ultimate Draft Kit available right now, we're doing a kind of a unique and special giveaway. We did this last year as well. It's an opportunity to uh, come and play in the very uh, now famous Scotty Fish Bowl, which raises money for uh, Fantasy Cares. But you've probably heard of the Scotty Fish Bowl before. We'll be playing in it. And we're gonna we've got five spots that Scott Fish has been kind enough to bestow upon us uh, that we can give away to our listeners. And so uh, we're gonna give away five spots. Uh, we will choose them. I, I these guys don't even know. We're gonna choose them next Monday by next Monday. So okay. and it's gonna come from anybody that has an ultimate draft kit. You can get that at ultimatedraftkit.com. Five spots in the Scotty Fish Bowl to play with us and many others. Um, it's a great opportunity to be a part of one of the the biggest leagues yeah. out there yeah it's a combination of casual players and industry people such as us and and, it's just, and scott fish is just he's the best yeah tremendous human yeah he's just so strong you know it's like, like robo what a human like robo i don't know yeah, that is not very human <laughs> he's half robot all i did was think about like a superhuman in RoboCop came to mind. That's where weird, I'm at. Weird. That's I mean, interesting. That's, you got a deep dive on that. 
<laughs> you think RoboCop's your You think your I need go-to? to talk to... Pinnacle humanity. Yeah. RoboCop. I mean, it's like a super I... person who could do like everything. Not Superman. <laughs> it's RoboCop. I, I was trying to think of an upgraded body. All right. Does you okay, made it okay, sound like all right, okay. you made it sound like you know he's a superb human. Like, and I figured he's got an upgraded body. Okay, okay. Scott Fish went into a lab. They upgraded him, and no. now he no, fights he's... police with no dexterity. <laughs> all right. Well, if you want to play in that man's league, yeah. uh, which yeah. we are playing in. Get your uh, ultimate draft kit, which you're going to want anyways because it is an incredible tool. And we're going to work with Fantasy Cares this year as well. Um, It helps raise money for a variety of charities. The bulk of it goes to shopping trips around the country, purchasing toys for tots around Christmas time. So uh, there you go. Uh, Anything else that we need to cover here at the top? Anything I'm forgetting, Mike? Nah. Anything RoboCop related? I Uh, I like RoboCop. Yeah. I'm just surprised yeah. that that's what happened. Yeah, I would have gone like Bruce Wayne. You know, he's not. But he's not full human. That literally, yeah. that makes no sense. What are you talking about? You put those two in a room. You see who comes out. Give me a break. I mean, why is Bruce Wayne your standard full for- human? But he wants yeah. an upgraded human. Yeah, I mean, he is upgraded so himself. Wait, no, when you no, think of a human put- that's like a superhuman. You're like Bruce Wayne. Yes, he's no. a superhero that's a full human. It's terrible. Yeah. Mike, who do you got? Uh, That's like at least Cyborg? Wolverine or something. Yeah. He, or like Captain America. Look, Captain America. Yeah, be. okay. Yeah, okay. Captain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. Whoops. No. <laughs> I, honestly, <laughs> shut off the podcast. All right. Uh, Everybody out there, just turn it off. Any news? We're not doing anything for you. No news. We do have a quick question. Uh, Jimmy in St. Louis writes in, if you could grab two stud running backs in the first rounds, are you comfortable with Debo as your wide receiver one? Right now, his average draft position is the late third, so that would be why the question's there. Not really. No? Um, I'd be nervous. I, I, I am nervous. Uh, you know, you don't know exactly where he's going to be. This this last year, he finished as a wide receiver one, finishes the wide receiver 12, was consistency of only a B, but we've seen over the last couple of years that it, you know, there, there are the tendencies of players to be able to disappear. You add Ricky Pierce all to this, uh, as of right now, Brandon Ayuk is, you know, part of the team, and there's a lot of mouths to feed. This is the lowest passing volume offense in the NFL last season, at least. And so, comfortable. Like, I I, I like having Debo Samuel. This is not an anti-Debo Samuel yeah, take. I mean, Ricky Pearsall doesn't get me off of yeah. Debo Samuel. I'm simply talking about consistency. That's, that's all I'm talking about. Debo Samuel's a man amongst boys. He's a great player. But when I'm looking at my wide receiver one for fantasy, I want someone who I, I feel like is going to consistently go out there. And, you know, I want him to have 160-plus targets. And so I think in the third round there are there are other options I would prefer. At, You're saying for your wide receiver one you want that many targets? You're never getting close to that with Debo. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. But he finished RB wide receiver two with 120 targets. So that's in his range of outcomes. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he 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 can have incredible explosive games. We'll have a ton of rushing attempts, rushing touchdowns, all that jazz. But I mean, if I'm I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, you know, right next to him, let's just talk about who's going there. Yeah, that's what I was going to go look at to see if there's somebody you prefer as your wide receiver one instead this, of him. This four pack that's going right next to each other: Nico Collins, Mike Evans, Debo Samuel, and DJ Moore. Uh, and who would you rather have? Like, put them in order of who you want as your wide receiver one most, Mike? Nico. Okay, so, and then number two on that list? Debo. Nico, Debo, then Evans, then... Yes. Who was the last name? DJ Moore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I'd rather have Nico. I'd rather have Evans as well. <sighs> Over Debo? Yeah. Ooh. So is that... Okay. Uh, uh, because we're struggling with the order and the confidence is that does that say something about his question it does like are you are you that's the situation you will be in if you go running back running back therefore you will have to make that call and it doesn't sound like any of us are like no we're not thrilled about Mike those. might be with Nico yeah, if if I'm coming out with two elite RBs and I get Nico I'm happy with that build okay uh, I think the San Francisco wide receiver room right now is pretty interesting going into the year and how we project it and Ayuk and the whole contra- – I mean, like we don't have news today to talk about, but some of the news is just the rumor mill of Brandon Ayuk. Right. Like he's taking these negotiations personally, 
obviously there's some public negotiation going on with I mean this is not the yes, first time is. that we've had things leak in from Brandon Ayuk's social accounts has he deleted the 49ers from his socials yet I imagine he must have because I, that's I, that's the next step I haven't seen it reported but it's boy that on sends the way. quite the message <laughs> doesn't it way. I mean it's definitely going to get a contract if he does that yeah that's, what if Kyle the Borgogan stripped his profile of fantasy footballers? Oh, like, we'd, just would let him, you, we'd let him go and replace him easily. Oh, okay. You That's not a good negotiating tactic? Mm -mm. No, it's not, Kyle. I know you're listening. Okay. Love you. Um. So, yeah, not not a whole lot to talk about. Like you said, not news, you know, any headline news. So, Brandon and Ayuk were paying attention to it. He's supposed to have met with the 49ers at his request, and we'll go from there. Um, confirmed that his Instagram has pictures of him in San Francisco gear. Okay. So he's still got he, another card to play, right? He also only has 12 Instagram posts. Hmm. What about his, his, uh, Twitter? Does, is there enough? Uh, that one I'd have to go find. Mm. S stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> the big news. All right. If you guys don't have anything else to chat about, let's jump right in. Bus. What do we mean when we're talking about a bust? Somebody that is not a guarantee to fail, of course, but maybe has some things working against them, represents a higher risk situation for fantasy managers, kind of a beware. There is a path for disappointment here. Yeah, and it, Anything it, you want to add to that? Yeah, It could be for a bunch of different reasons. Maybe it's because of where they're going. Maybe it's because of, you know, it's not always that we think this player is terrible and should Correct. not be picked at any cost. It's it's a matter of, you know, you, you look at Tony Pollard last year. He might have been the biggest bust outside of injured players that there was. He wasn't bad or worthless. He was just like, you know, the seventh pick in the draft, and he was a terrible pick. It didn't return – on what you expected yeah. because of what you invested, he was a bust, even though he was still a relevant fantasy asset. I feel like uh, I want to let one of you guys begin this uh, segment on the show today because uh, I had started on our last episode. So who wants to go first with a oh. one of their own bust picks? I'm going to let Jason go. Yeah, I'll hop in. Because uh, honestly, uh, earlier when I just was swiping through the show doc here to see what was going on, I thought that you this was your value pick. It is not. And it is not. This is my bust oh. selection. And I am fine with it. I believe it. I have not drafted him at where he is going. And that is one of the best wide receivers of this generation, Devontae Adams, Ooh. wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders, I believe is a bust pick in fantasy football this year. Let me explain. It's kind of a, a three-headed argument, right? You've got... The age. The best kind. <laughs> you have An the, argument with three <laughs> heads. You have the age, you have the team, and you have the draft cost. The draft cost is a big, big part of this. This is not like Mike Evans last year where he was dropping down into the middle rounds because he was older and there was a little bit of name fatigue. And then you have the option of him finishing as a top 15 wide receiver and being a, a phenomenal pick. This is a guy who right now is the wide receiver – 10 um, in sleeper, an early second round pick. This is being drafted as a as an elite, definite hit, a dominant guy. Um, you know, a long, long time ago when he was starting his career, we used to joke that he stunk because he was supposed to be good. Well, and he wasn't. it wasn't a joke. Well, that that's true. <laughs> he, Remember he, how many years I reminded you he had never hit a thousand? Yeah. But even he before was, that, he just he was he started really slow. Well, he was historically bad on a per route basis through two years. But then the last eight years, he's been awesome. He's averaged 151 targets, 98 receptions, 1,200 yards, and 11 touchdowns, Ooh. including this last year where, you know, he was really, really good. 103 for 11, 44, and 8. And so right now, Devontae Adams is 31 and a half years old. He will turn 32 on Christmas Eve. Please remember ChristmasFootball.com, one of the greatest websites that is out there. But – if we look back at the last couple of years, whether it's situational or age or whatever, he has actually declined, right? He went from Aaron Rodgers to Derek Carr to Aiden O'Connell and company, and his catch rate went from, you know, high 70s to 50s now. His yards per catch 
have gone from, you know, up in the 12 to 15s. Last year was down at 11. His yards per route run for the first time in a long time was sub two. His yards after catch, which has always been, you know, he's been great at that. He was down at 3.3 yards after catch. And they, they changed how they utilized him and stopped putting him in the slot that much last year. Now, he was hyper-targeted. He had a ton of targets, but they were coming from Aiden O'Connell, who very well currently is being projected to have the upper hand, but it's it's him or Gardner, Gardner Minshew, right? 63% of Devontae Adams' targets last year were catchable. That is like, okay, great. Give me, you need 175 targets to just be okay. Only Garrett Wilson had a lower catchable target rate, and the quarterback situation has not been Im improved or fixed here uh, for the Raiders. If you look at this Luke Getze offense coming in as the new offensive coordinator, it's music to Antonio Pierce's ears. They are, I mean, in 2022, 27th in neutral pass rate he was. 32nd in neutral, um, or, or 27th in neutral, pa uh, neutral pace, 32nd in neutral pass rate. Uh, this last year, 31st and 30th. I mean, this is not... So slow and not passing a ton. Slow and not passing a ton. But it's really – so you've got the team and the quarterback issue that I'm not in love with. You've got the age that I'm not in love with. And now let's look at the ADP, where you have to select him. Over the last decade, there have been 11 wide receivers, 31 years or older, that have been drafted in the first three rounds. Now, if you're being drafted in the first three rounds at that age, you're a star. You you just dominated last year, right? The, the list is full of Hall of Famers, of Roddy White, Andre Johnson – Brandon Marshall, Larry Fitzgerald, Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, like nonstop studs. Three, three of those 11 finished among the top 20 wide receivers. Only Jordy Nelson, who was the wide receiver one in 2016, and then the following year completely fell off a map, Julian Edelman, and, of course, last year's Devontae Adams. <laughs> However, <laughs> uh Last year's Devontae Adams is the perfect <laughs> example of Jordy Nelson had it and then it went away. And so I, I just feel like you've got a combination of a couple of things here. One, what is his ceiling? De Devontae Adams with Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew is not a top five. You can't. No way. No way. He can't have enough touchdowns to be a top five wide receiver in 2024. So you're drafting a guy who he very well might have have another 175 targets, might be okay, and so but you're drafting him at that ceiling right now, like that he's gonna finish. You know, hope maybe he'll finish as wide receiver 12 and sneak out what he did last year, barely. I mean, I'm, you said what's his ceiling? My answer to that would be six to six to 12. Yeah, I mean, last year 175 targets finished 12th. Now they add Brock Bowers. Another offensive weapon. They still have 11. Jacoby Myers. Um, so this is like, I just feel like right now you're drafting him at his ceiling. But this isn't the case where, you know, some guys are drafting him at the ceiling, but the floor is not too far me, away. This could be the expiring asset. Remember when when Julio Jones was unbelievable, just nonstop every year. He's old. He's never going to stop. And then all of a sudden he went from, I mean, look at this names. Just, just I'll let you go. Julio Jones, <laughs> Julio Jones was one of these guys who was drafted super high, finished as the wide receiver 52 that year. Jordy Nelson, the year after that great year, finishes the wide receiver 46. Brandon Marshall finishes the wide receiver 47. Andre Johnson, the wide receiver 28. Like, the floor is actually low. I will defend Julio because points per game that year, he was on pace to be a stud. He just missed a bunch let of me, games. Let me make the more. He's old. Yeah. We'll get into part of, yeah, part of that being old. Can I weasel in for and help your argument? I'll allow it. Um, last season, he finished as the wide receiver 11. From week 10 on, he had 191 target pace, so they even went up. But his consistency was a C. He had 47% of his games where he was above 10.5 fantasy points. That is a sub-50-50 shot at 10.5 points from Devontae Adams, who was formerly the most guaranteed player to deliver on a week-to-week -week basis. To me... You can make the argument that last year's, you know, performance is not worthy of the pick. Yeah, it's if not you got an identical going. season, I don't know if you're happy. I mean, I think that that tells you something about the bust potential, which does exist due to age, quarterback, offense, 
All of those. I mean, I think Devontae Adams is loud enough to get 175 targets. But does the yards per, you know, catch go down again? Do the touchdown variables exist? I think so. And even if he gives you what he gave you last year, look, it was really cool in championship weekend. That was amazing. He had 21 it. targets. Yeah, he had was... uh, 13 receptions for 126 and two, and he still caught eight touchdowns last year with that hodgepodge of quarterbacks. But he had a really rough stretch. I mean, I had the I went on the ride. Mm -hmm. Like I had I picked him up, and he scored no touchdowns for like seven straight weeks in the middle of the year. He had a five week stretch which he was on pace for 60 and 598. So, and, and I'm the... thinking he was loud during the five weeks that it didn't work out. Yeah, the 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 floor for this offense, you know, you you look at the playoffs, well he was great at the end, but in week 16, he stopped you from getting to the championship when he had one catch for 4 yards. He had four games that finished inside his fantasy finish. So he finished at wide receiver 11. He only had 4 games where he finished inside the top 11. So, I think consistency is the strongest argument against Devontae Adams and then you add on all the things you just said, it makes it it just makes like it if a he was a third pick. or fourth Exa round pick, yes. I'd be really cozy. Exactly. I am not saying Devontae Adams has definitely lost it. I saw something on film that makes me think this is the beginning of the end. But what I know is that the end comes for everyone as eventually, and he is being drafted. <laughs> at, and he, he is being drafted at a ceiling. I don't it's just want a, to die. A terrible, terrible pick for his current <laughs> draft cost. How did you make this about you? He said the end comes for everybody. Oh, it's it about was, all it was, of us. We was, all want to die, Mike. I mean, he just he just existential crisis. Um, we'll take a break. We'll come back with Mike's pick. All right, we're back. Uh, we'll shift to Mike's bust selection here because we it will pivot us off of the wide receiver spot because my bust pick is a wide receiver as well. So why don't we take a little break here, and why don't you break everybody's hearts? So this reminds me of – this was years ago to tie it into Jay, what Jason was talking about, the year that Julio Jones went to Tennessee, and I said, this brings me great pain to say that Julio Jones is going to be a bust pick for fantasy football this year. And it, look, that's that's tooting – that's toot toot over here. But, like, that was the year where it just – it was in, it was gone, collapsed. It absolutely vanished for him. And so this is not that saying that it's going to vanish for this player because he's an up and comer, but it's it's C.J. Stroud, seemingly America's quarterback from the Houston Texans, and he's just this is an ADP problem, and it is to me it's a massive ADP problem. Is that Coleridge Bernard Stroud the fourth? There you got to talk to Kyle on this. Kyle, one. is that his real name? That's his name. Coleridge Bernard Stroud. Coleridge? That's, this dude. I never heard that. That's a fancy That's name. regal. Yes. I don't even know where he got the J. I know where he got the C for Coleridge. The, Coleridge. Maybe, he's just, he's just taking the, the sound. Yeah, with a, no. he's with just, a J. <laughs> he's just taking the sound. Coleridge. C-J. Yeah, that makes sense. Math checks out. <laughs> Look. Go on, Mike. <laughs> it's one of those Robert is Bob. Type okay. of situation. So yeah, Coleridge is CJ. So here's the problem. It's completely about his ADP. Right now, going as a QB5 on the sleeper platform, that's the middle of the fourth round, the QB6 for underdog and best ball drafts. And he he is an up-and-coming quarterback. He's a great player. Like The future is so bright. He's turning into a superstar. But his archetype, he is a pocket passer. And to me, I'm not drafting a pocket passer in the first four rounds of a fantasy football draft. I need a player who has a ceiling that is not contingent on this guy having a, an out-of-control season, and he throws 35-plus passing touchdowns. We have – look, looking at what C.J. Stroud actually did, because the excitement uh, is not matching that, Last year, he was a consistency score of C in our rating. So that means, you know, 46% of the time he hit our threshold that we want to see. Top five games. So ceiling games. Top five games for C.J. Stroud last year. Two. Games with three or more passing touchdowns. With If you're a pocket passer and I'm going to hit a ceiling, you better have a bunch of these. One. 
One, against Tampa Bay, who everyone was throwing multiple touchdowns against Tampa Bay. His splits were if he was at home and against a a bottom 16 defense, that's when he really came to play and, and gave us a bunch of fantasy football points. But he doesn't run. On average, guys who are giving us elite production at the at the quarterback position on average, 28% of their fantasy production comes via rushing. C.J. Stroud was under 15% last year. So, like, this is, like, my argument for Anthony Richardson. It's because I know that he's going to run a ton, and I'm chasing the ceiling. But C.J. Stroud, is just, he's not going to give that to us. Remember when Baker Mayfield had a historic rookie season, broke, breaks the, the passing touchdown record at that time, gets juiced up all the way to QB4, and then everything just falls apart? It's... And then, like the guys who are going, uh, like going after him, you know, and or just let's. I'm going to ask you guys what you think of this player's season. Okay, last year was this. What is it? A good season or a bad season? And you have uh, so Patrick Mahomes was that a bad season for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, and he was point five points behind C.J. Stroud, Justin Herbert within half a point of C.J. Stroud. Kyler Murray was right there. Russell Wilson. Guys, Russell Wilson was scoring one fewer fantasy point on average per game than C.J. Stroud. Brock Purdy outscored him. And, yes, I understand the projection part because you have to do that in fantasy football. You have to take your guess on who's going to elevate. Stephon Diggs is in town. It's year two. But it's you're taking a player who it's just like Joe Burrow. You're – if the touchdowns come, then he's going to be great for fantasy football, and you are risking such a high pick on a player who, to me, top three is it's not even in the range of outcomes for C.J. Stroud. Well, that that would be him just turning into the next Patrick Mahomes, yes, and, and, and or having one of those uh, Justin Herbert uh, and and um, Joe Burrow we, years where here's, you, you throw a bunch. He can't. That is in the range of outcomes, but to me, it's like here's what's tough for me to go against a guy that I really like. What were okay. you going to say? I was going to say Burrow and Stroud have an identical range of outcomes to me. Like, yes. They, yes. They're, they're 100%. Who's going to have the better season? I don't know. I probably What's lean his, Burrow, but Burrow's a couple rounds later. What's the ADP for Stroud? What, uh, what quarterback? So, quarterback uh, six on underdog, quarterback five on sleeper. Okay. So he is going just a couple picks behind Patrick Mahomes and Lamar And where did Jackson. he finish last year? Last year, I know he he missed. Uh, did he miss a game? He missed a he missed some time. Let me get the uh, in points per game. He was the quarterback nine. So here here's my worry. Okay, and you tell me whether it's it's founded or not. And I think I, I think I'm with you. I think we all agree on this. The Stroud is just being people love him, and it sounds like at QB six and five, it's priced in the the jump. Yes, because I'm I'm looking at like all the top fantasy quarterbacks literally all the ones that had breakout seasons right like uh, uh, highest um pedigree type of situations so allen hurts mahomes lamar herbert burrow kyler lawrence okay all those guys higher fantasy finish in year two than year one for okay. all of them so if you believe sure. that the player is it, the only one that i could find that had a worse fantasy finish after a kind of like i would say uh it popped on film type of situation was Dak because Dak went from like uh, six to ten in his second year. I would imagine Baker as well, right? Um, oh, Baker got worse. That's, Baker, oh, that's what I'm saying. Baker I didn't. Was Baker saying. was a, a tough one because he didn't play till the second half of his his rookie season, so you didn't have like right the ability to go and look and see that um, per game. But per game, I'm sure you're right. Um, so, but you know, in recent years, if you showed it, you did get better. But QB six and five is already baking in the better. So if he finishes at QB six, five, seven, if he's at seven, that's that that's the that's the problem. The the margin for error of being a bust pick, like, would you if, feel happy? No. If he is the quarterback seven or quarterback eight, that's that's going to feel like a catastrophic pick because meanwhile, guys going multiple round. If he's there. Joe Burrow's probably ahead of him. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. one of the, these the the pocket passers who so let's go like um Stroud, Herbert, 
Yeah, I'm not going to put Burrow, Goff, but Jordan Love, who, which Jordan Love uh, had more fantasy points per game than C.J. Stroud, and is going after him. The, like those guys are just put him in a in a mixer, and and take pull, the best and, value and pull one out yeah. because to me, odds wise, they're all really really close, and it and it again, it hurts because C.J. Stroud is such a good player, but we know historically, like uh, here's another one for you historically. Quarterbacks drafted in the first round who had a touchdown rate over 4% in year one, they, on average, they declined the following year. And if he has any kind of decline in his passing touchdown rate, then it is then it is a disaster. Yeah, right now I have a hard time imagining C.J. Stroud throwing fewer touchdowns in year two with yeah, additional weapons and health. Like Dell was gone, no digs, missed Schultz for periods of time, was a rookie. Yeah, rookies. Like – the the number one hardship for rookie quarterbacks is touchdowns. So I sure. don't I don't think that's changed. I'm I'm just trying to give the other side like yeah. I we have been a universal three pack saying Stroud's being drafted too high. So I wanted the opportunity to kind of think through it a little bit more on my end of like, you know, we all know what we see with our eyeballs. One of the better quarterbacks of the next generation. He's great. All right, I'm gonna go with Zay Flowers as my bus pick. Yeah, and. It's a weird one. I'm going to be honest with you. He's a weird player. One of the weirdest I've ever seen. In fact, uh, I'm going to start with uh, just a wild stat comparison situation because he was a blend, Zay Flowers was, and this is why you saw the highlights and then you went and looked at your fantasy stats and you were like, this wasn't the year that I thought I had. <laughs> he was a weird blend of all or nothing where 27% of his targets were behind the line of scrimmage. Okay, that was the sixth highest. But then 20% of them were 20-plus air yards. <laughs> and there were only a handful of players that had that type of mix where you had a, a super high A dot, which is average depth of target, or a super low and a super low, and it was these players. Listen to this type. This will make sense. Rondale Moore. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Rondale Moore in Arizona. Bombs, behind the line of scrimmage, kind of depressing, not fun. Jackson Smith and Jigba was one. Yeah. Marvin Mims was one. Calvin Austin, Jalen Hyatt, Chris Moore. So it's kind of it's kind of an athlete that a team doesn't know how to use in the right way, maybe, and also doesn't have prototypical wide receiver one route tree skills or something to that extent. Now I'm not saying Zay Flowers can't advance into that, but he is an undersized guy. He is much more Rondale Moore, right, than a Devontae Adams is. Because he's not built like Chase or Adams or one of these big-bodied guys. He's he's quick twitch. He's uh, kind of used the gadgetry behind the line of scrimmage. And he's a respectable receiver that I think will be ex extremely important for the Ravens. And yet, when Andrews was on the field last year, his pace was 82 and 900 with no touchdowns. So you're undersized. You don't have that normal route tree. You're used in gadget ways. If you don't have a big play, you're disappointed. And you had a lot of opportunity without their number one, who is Mark Andrews, out on the field last year. And so to me, like right now he's going ahead of Amari Cooper. He's going ahead of George Pickens. He's going ahead of Kirk and Ridley and Tank Dell. So Zay Flowers is a player, I think, that doesn't even have a necessarily defined home on the offense in terms of how they're going to utilize him. You bring in Derrick Henry now. I am just scared of that touchdown variability in the big plays. When they don't happen, I'm not sure Zay Flowers is a player you're happy you started that week because I don't know if uh, a bunch of behind-the-line-of-scrimmage targets with no touchdowns is going to add up to what you would hope it added up to. Yeah, Flowers to me is a tremendous NFL player and, I think, and an excellent wide receiver who will have four to five spike weeks. So it's it's not – that he will be useless for you, but when he doesn't have the spike weeks, it's that's when it's going to be rough. Of uh, and just it's to me, it's the easiest, it's the low hanging argument, low hanging fruit argument of he he did everything with Mark Andrews off the field like that, but that is everything to me. Mark Andrews is the number one target for the Ravens. He's the number one target for Lamar Jackson, and Zay Flowers was de facto into that when Mark Andrews was missing for the second half of the season. It 
again, the spike weeks will happen. Like the the end of season four, Zay Flowers, the final five games, four of them, he three of them he was top ten, four he was top fifteen. Like so, the spike weeks will happen. But if it's not a spike, it's not going to be a well. It's Zay Zay did okay for me this week. You're going to have a lot of weeks where you look, you took an L, and you'll look at Flowers' output and go, that's. That's the reason why. Unfortunately, in the Lamar Jackson era, big ADP bets on wide receivers have also not turned right. out very well. Whether it was Hollywood or uh, you know Tory Smith or um, who was I thinking of Bateman? Oh, yeah. that's who I was actually thinking of Bateman from you know years gone by. It's a tough bet because the offense just you know good defense. Some games they win on the legs of Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. and nobody has a big game. So, again, it's good to put a bow on it where these busts don't mean that these players suck. It doesn't mean that they're guaranteed to fail. It means that some things are working against them, and it might not represent a good value on your draft day. I, I certainly like a lot of wide receivers going after Zay Flowers. The ones you mentioned were like I would take most all of them Cooper over Flowers. Cooper for sure. Amari Cooper being behind him is, is nonsensical, but – he is the scariest one to me, where it's like I could, you know, a year two wide receiver who I think is exceptionally talented, yes. who's got to compete with Bateman and, and Nelson Aguilar as the primary wide receiver. Like, you could see a leap forward, and we could eat crow on this. Yeah. I do agree oh, yeah. with you, but he's he's a scary. He's scary. I'm not wanting to bet against him, uh, but I, I, I've been avoiding him. You're letting me do it instead. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's jump into some values. Values. All right, Jason, you're up, and um, please say Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams <laughs> is my value if he drops into the sixth round. Okay, he's got a ways um, to go. Otherwise, my value that I want to bring up is the antithesis of Mike's bust. And maybe maybe mention what a value is to the new listeners here. Sure. Just a, in terms of what the context is a, of what we're talking about. A value to me is someone that represents like you're 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 drafting a player at their floor and it is a really sure bet that they are going to outperform what you're having to invest to acquire this player. And that they're just kind of mispriced in ADP. That's how I look at it. Um someone that I think when you look at who's going around them or where this player archetype usually slots in is significantly higher and right now it's just not happening for that player those are the values I try to find um, and when I say it's the antithesis of Mike's bust pick that's because Mike feels like there's an a too high of an ADP on a pure pocket passer well I have too low of an ADP on an exceptionally mobile rushing quarterback and that is rookie Jaden Daniels for the Washington commanders right now he is being drafted in the double-digit rounds as the quarterback 15. You can easily take him as the second quarterback on your roster if you aren't bullish on him. I am perfectly fine taking him as my number one. I have drafted him uh, you know, multiple rounds ahead of ADP because I think that's where he belongs, not going crazy and taking him in the fifth or anything. But like in the fifth right now is where Anthony Richardson is being drafted. This is a – why is he being drafted there? Because mobile quarterbacks can break fantasy football. They can have exceptional spike weeks. They can finish as the wide receiver one, especially if they can combine it with passing. When you see those great – like Lamar Jackson's, you know, record-breaking season was because he excelled as a passer and he was as good a rusher as we've seen in the NFL. Jaden Daniels is a remarkable rushing athlete, and even though it took him a little bit of time in college – his last season, you know, when he won the Heisman over Caleb Williams, was outstanding. He looked like a great passer. There, there's more evidence that we've already seen to say he's a better passer than Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson's a projection sure. going yeah, yeah. forward. Um, Anthony Richardson has the size and the girth on Jaden Daniels. Yeah, but, he's got it. But, oh, but at the same time, you know, Lamar Jackson's always been more of a, a Jaden Daniels type. And when I look at where he's going, you know, this is a discount Anthony Richardson. This is the only, you know, real true dual threat quarterback you're getting in the double digit rounds. Um, you know, fantasy scoring is broken. I, I, I hate that mobile quarterbacks are so important for fantasy football um, when they might not be as good in the NFL. You know, Justin Fields was so great on so many weeks 
and then can't even be a starter in the NFL. Um, but here's how good Jaden Daniels is at rushing. D Daniels was 43% of his team's rushing yards last year. That's the third highest ever for a first-round quarterback. Uh, at LSU, he posted the highest scramble rate of any college quarterback in their final season with 250 attempts. Scramble is what I want in the oh, NFL. Be careful, Jaden. <laughs> oh, I know be this dude. Careful. This here's the one He's thing made I would a popsicle sticks. The one thing I would say, if I could give Jaden Daniels a piece of advice, when you when you break and you run, which you are exceptional at, and you make people look foolish, next time after you make that first guy miss, just keep your eyes open, dude. Just keep your eyes open. Oh, I don't you think know. he's closing? Like, he has to be. <laughs> he has to be because after he makes that first dude miss, he just runs right into an insane tackle. So there are some things to work out with here. But while he's active, while he's healthy, while he's on the field, I don't see him not being a good quarterback. The comp to me for Jaden Daniels in his final season has always been Kyler Murray. It's that combination of he's not the best rusher in the league. He's not. He's not Lamar Jackson, but he's so much better of a passer than a lot of these pure rushing quarterbacks. And so when you combine them both, Kyler's the comp. Well, Kyler came in in his rookie season and was the quarterback seven with, you guessed it, Cliff Kingsbury, the offensive coordinator that now inherits I did not guess that. Jaden Daniels. <laughs> I was talking to the audience. Okay, They're so much gotcha, smarter. They're gotcha. like, oh, it's Cliff. It's Cliff Kingsbury. Uh, look, Cliff Kingsbury, how the teams function under him, Number one in no, no huddle rate for four years. First in neutral pass in each of Kyler's first two years. The fantasy community has gotten smarter, and we know that we need to draft mo mobile Russian quarterbacks. For some reason in 2024, we are letting Jaden Daniels slip behind Caleb Williams, which I you – know, look, Dynasty, okay, long-term outlet outlook, great. But I want a rookie quarterback who's going to run the ball. That's what Jaden Daniels is going to do. If I can get him in the double-digit rounds as the quarterback 15 – my first or second quarterback, I'm happy to do it. I think he's a smoking value there. I feel like the last big conversation that we had to have that was similar to the Jaden Daniels discussion, I guess it was Anthony Richardson last yeah. year, but before that it was Trey Lance, right? Like we haven't had that conversation in a while about like if they get on the field, even if it takes them a while to acclimate as a passer, which we knew Richardson probably would. He had a game where he – completed 11 of 27 passes or something like that, it still doesn't matter, right? It still mm -hmm, translates correct. to uh, fantasy value, and you just, you know, you accept the obnoxious scoring, and you turn away, and you close your eyes. Yeah, take advantage, man. I'm, if he closes his eyes. Play play by the rules of your league and dominate. All right, so Jaden Daniels, I look, I've risen uh, statistically, you know, what I have in, in my projections on him recently as well. So I'm with you on that. I think it's it's something we can't ignore. I don't know if you know this. You actually are the highest on Jaden Daniels. He is your quarterback. There you go. 11. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew I had moved him up quite a bit. I didn't know where he landed. But, um, yeah, if he's on the field and is the starter, which he's already no taken debate, first team reps in camp. Uh, yeah, I, well, I mean, if he doesn't get exploded. Well, right. Uh, quick break. Back with Mike's value pick. All right, we are going through the busts and values, individual picks on today's show. We just got done with the bust picks, and then Jason shared his first value pick for the show, which is Jaden Daniels. Mike, who you got? What if I told you uh -oh. there was a guy <laughs> that finished last year as the running back two? The, like, a running back two? The, 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 the second best running back? Yeah. Okay. As in the running back two who finished with, uh, let me let me do some quick calculating here. Twenty one touchdowns, and he's being drafted outside of the top twenty four running backs. It's Raheem Mostert of the Miami Dolphins, and that's being like egregiously hyperbolic and loud. Of look, he's not going to be the running back too, but he's being drafted in the back of the seventh round. RB twenty five on sleeper, RB twenty eight on underdog in best ball. And here's the, it's Devon Achan, explosive young player, one of the fastest guys in the league. But right now, Raheem Mostert is being drafted completely, completely like it's locked in. Achan's going to have the vast majority of the work. It will not be a timeshare in the slightest. It's just going to be Achan, Achan over and over. 
And I think that that is just a very silly thing to think about Raheem Mostert. Sure, he's old, but the Miami Dolphins, with their actions, they gave him a two-year extension. They, they said, we're going to roll this thing back. They have a day three rookie, which I'm not going to factor him into the plans because they had other depth that they needed to replace. But the fact that Raheem Mostert is going so, so late, and even if he's nowhere, it, even if he's not in the top 10, it doesn't matter. You're getting a tremendous value of a running back that you can play. Going back and look, I don't know why the Miami Dolphins would look at what Devon H and his health through last year's training camp till the end of the season and say, yeah, this is the guy. We're going to give him just 20 plus opportunities every single week. I, they're not going to do that. In the final two weeks, or the, the final week of the season, Raheem Mostert was not playing for the Miami Dolphins. Devon A. Chan was the starter. He played 63% of the snaps. He got 11 opportunities. Why? Because Jeff Wilson got opportunities as well. And, and so for the, for the thought process that the Dolphins are going to completely flip and move to Devon H. Chan, I, I think it is absolutely crazy. The offense is going to be spectacular. Uh, I don't like talking about that offense at all with the idea of them just handing the keys to somebody. I think that's right. it's just such a mm – -hmm. I'm with you on that. Like, if you listen to Mike McDaniel talk, he talks about the fact that, like, Raheem leads the room. Like, he talks about it this offseason. Like, Raheem's the leader of the room, and then we've got great players in the room. So, uh, you know, the age is what scares people off. There's a bit of a efficiency problem with the Mostert season that reminds me of Debo finishing number two. Right. Uh, when he got all those running back opportunities and like he wasn't being drafted as number two either because we all looked at it and said, boy, that was just that was a special year. And I think we have that with Mostert. Yeah, and it's it's one hundred percent it's it's age and H N. And we've seen this uh, just historically, running backs with fifteen or more total touchdowns. They're eighty if you're young your ADP just gets on a rocket ship and takes off. If you're older, people are like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm going to overlook it. And honestly, the truth is, for a lot of old running backs, I would overlook it as well. Except this is – this it, it's the same thing. Like, this is a run back. This is not a new team where the old running back, we're going to see if he can take over. This is the exact same team with the exact same offensive scheme and – and same, for the most part, the same offensive players. They had 20 carries inside the five. A-chan's not going to get 80% of those. Raheem Mostert is going to be involved. He's going to be involved in the passing game. So for him to be going outside of the top 24, I think it is – it's it's a free starting running back. Yeah, a free starting running back. And and they will def – I mean, yeah, he's older. They just signed him to a two-year extension yeah. this offseason. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got that done. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um. All right, you wanted me to talk about my value pick. Yes, yeah. This, this, this is a tough one. To no, you can't use a ticket on this. We got to hear what's going all on. All right, all right. This all is right. actually a really tough one to talk about. I got, I got about halfway through your value pick, and I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I was like, I do not. I was uh, like, I gotta pick yeah. somebody else. So I did. Yeah. No, no, I'm oh, sticking. Oh, I, I thought you I'm, made a mid show I'm pivot. <laughs> Look, the the name that Jason is uh, just. Hold on, hold on. He's, can you use yeah. it? Can I get the nasty boy? No. Oh, no. Steel underpants. You need them, brother. You're giving me the steel. I, it's Quentin Johnston, all right? <laughs> it's Quentin Johnston. Yeah. Hey, the starting. The value opportunity. He's undrafted. Is there. He's undrafted in most leagues, if not the last pick in your draft. I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to try to set the table so that you can at least just accept two seconds worth of Quentin Johnston as a value. Okay. Um, I'm going to clear my biases and just listen. Yeah, I would clear out all the film from last year as well because he, he did not have a good season. He was he was terrible. But Mike Williams gone, Keenan Allen gone. Let me, let me ask you some questions to set the table. Did the Panthers have a good passing offense last year? No. Uh, did the Broncos have a good passing, passing offense last year? No. How about the New England Patriots? Did they have a good no. passing offense? No. no what sorry. about the Chicago Bears? No, 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 and what? neither did the next team. You say. Uh, what about the <laughs> what about the Jets? No, oh, okay, no. Totally. The, wait, they had a passing. So listen, those are terrible, awful, and any of those have good quarterbacks that I mentioned? Any of those teams? Oh, I mean, you could argue Justin Fields ish, but he's gone. So, um, you know, Bryce Young and and then Russ gone. Okay, 
The Patriots? Yeah, go Not on. very good. So bad quarterback, bad offenses. And yet, there were diamonds in the rough. There was the, there were nasty boys. Oh, you want that? Yeah. Nasty. Adam Thielen in Carolina. Oh. Cortland Sutton in Denver. Yeah. Kendrick Bourne, before he got hurt, had yeah. big games yeah, my in guy. New England. Uh, you had, when Cooper Cup was out, this was one where you did have a good quarterback, but you saw Tutu Atwell have big games before Cooper Cup returned and Puka broke out. DJ Moore in Chicago, a bad passing offense. He obviously is a much uh, more talented player than Quentin Johnson. And obviously Garrett Wilson got a baseline level of stuff done in New York. So my argument for Quentin Johnson is you have the best quarterback in Justin Herbert that any of those teams, minus maybe Matthew Stafford, of all the teams I mentioned. I always mention it this way, which is, they get the ball. Like, every team gets the ball half the time, right? Like, you get offensive possessions no matter how bad you end up on the stat sheet, and then you end up with these players that are going to be started on your fantasy rosters, which is what happened last year with Cortland Sutton. He got started. That's what happened with Thielen. He was on fire to begin the year. Quentin Johnson, here's what I know. Justin Herbert's a good quarterback. Yes. Harbaugh's a good coach. Yes. And he's going to play every down. Yeah. Yeah. That because you don't have a choice, like, and and you could take every bit of off season uh, talk about Quentin Johnson, which is, you know, they're they're trying to talk him up and be positive, and look, you could throw it all out the window. They're going to give him the shot. They invested a first round pick. The, it, they are pot committed on Quentin Johnston being yeah. part of their future, and I don't think any of us believe Joshua Palmer is the kind of player that just like, you know, can take over an offense. And Lad McConkey's a rookie. He may end up being the best player that you have. Yes. But I think Quentin Johnston, for free, is one of those players that is in the category of they'll, he'll probably be on the waiver wire in a lot of leagues, and he'll probably be picked up in year, week one or week two by almost every single person because they're going to give him the opportunity to do it. And he is a first-round pedigree guy. I went and watched every single snap of him last year. We talked about it earlier on the show. You, you might not have listened earlier in the offseason. Congrats on that. You didn't have to hear me talk about Quentin Johnston <laughs> again. But they look for big plays in the Greg Roman offense. Roman's come out and talked about being more balanced. I've been saying all offseason you're probably undervaluing the passing game in uh, in terms of the Chargers because you have a great quarterback and you don't run every play, especially if your defense gives up points. So to me, it's a starting wide receiver that may be the best starting wide receiver fantasy-wise on this roster that's free. So you're talking about an offense that has like no one being drafted at wide receiver. So I'm going to be the guy that said his name. I, Me. I, actually, I Jason Moore, <laughs> am the one that said it. I actually love every single thing you said, and I agree with every single thing you said. I This is why I – honestly, I was maybe going to make Lad McConkey my value pick Ooh. because I agree with all the things behind. That's the, fine. The, the, yeah, the, that's fine. The the The, the – system and the reality that Quentin Johnson finds himself in, that's what I agree with. I just don't think Quentin might be good enough to actually succeed. I, I'm a huge lad believer, so I, everything you said, I agree. I just shift the purse. Yeah, I mean, you have to pay an eighth-round pick for lad, and you get Quentin for free if you want to do the the bet. Both of those are value spots if they do break out. And, um, you know, it'll be very interesting to watch what that offense does because it's being – Disregarded. They're, they're saying the right things, too. You're hearing about he will be used more, not just as a downfield threat, but we're going to use him as a playmaker. And like get He those. made plays after the catch last year on a handful of times when you're like, okay, that's a skill set that he has. Because he had that, and that was like a one of his trump cards in college. Like He was great after the catch. They didn't, they didn't focus on using him that way last year. So that that's like... That's the hope for me. And He's also their biggest touchdown target yeah. physically and also a player that like is 22. So I'm going to give him a, just a small, tiny bit of margin at 6'4", 215, 22 years old with a great quarterback that maybe, just maybe, he's draft-worthy in fantasy at some point in time. I, I will say the, the value to drafting him is that you're, you're going to see what this team, what this offense, what this system looks like week one how he comes across he's the type of 
uh, pick you want to make your last pick in a draft where week That's one fair. you're going to learn information. Yeah. You know, if if he comes out and has seven, eight, nine, ten targets and they're utilizing him in a great way, or if you come out week one and all of a sudden Lad McConkey's got a thirty percent target share, you're going to know enough information to go into that week one waivers and be like, I I got to hold this guy, or I've got something here, or he's expendable. And so I I I like that. I I do think the real value pick here is that the Chargers passing offense is undervalued that doesn't mean that it's great or going to be a complete league winner but right now that a Justin Herbert led NFL offense is being completely left for dead and that's dumb and uh, Kyle pointed out the hilarity that one of the best comps to the situation you could ever have is Mike Williams with the Chargers because Mike Williams with the Chargers played 10 games as a rookie he had 95 yards as a rookie he came back the next year and was the wide receiver 24. So it's not often, you know, a situation that you're looking for, a bum first year, yeah. but you've also had players that have emerged, and it's ironic that Mike Williams, a big-bodied Los Angeles Charger rookie, who was a first-round pick, right? Yes, he was. It, you know, maybe these big guys, they just they, – they, Maybe his uniform didn't fit right. I don't know. Devontae Ooh. Adams needed some time. He's like, I'm, I'm too big. <laughs> Let me develop. So we'll see. Uh, that's the best I can do, guys. That's the best I can do with Quentin Johnston, and that's the best we're going to do on today's episode because we are done Woo, talking about Quentin it. Johnston, and <laughs> and that's over. So uh, ultimatedraftkid.com, get in on the opportunity to win five spots to the Scotty Fishbowl. We'll be giving those out. Um, if you already bought the UDK, just be rest assured you're like entered to win those as well, and that giveaway will uh, we'll pick some names on Monday. So you'll have a little bit of – time there we'll get into a mock draft next week and um i think our thursday is uh fourth of july correct next week but yeah. then guess what we're on to three shows a week so you're getting a saturday oh, show next week wait All right yeah it's uh, july mike oh, crap. and then it'll be august it's every day say goodbye to your family all right that'll do it for the fantasy footballers podcast shout out to al borland over there the falcon inducers alley thank you guys We'll catch you on our next episode. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.